I recall a friend of mine in Chicago, his name was Joey. And I knew his um, mother. And after I've been out here for a number of years, I called Joey because I wanted to talk to him and re reconnect with my um, school buddy. And so his mother asked the phone. And she said, um, David Joy has passed away. And I'm like, really? She said, yeah, he passed away. She said, he passed away December the 26th. I was like, really? Right after Christmas? Yeah. She said, right after Christmas. She said, let me tell you something. She said, on the 23rd, she said, because after the doctors had told us that there's nothing more that they can do for Joy, we said, well, are we able to just bring him home? And she said, the doctor said, yes. She said, now, on the 23rd, I was sitting in the living room. And all of a sudden, I heard this coarse sound, like, oh, oh. And she said, when I entered Joey's room, of course, it was um, a very foul smell because he was in the he was he was in the process of, of of dying and she said when i looked at joy she said i knew that joy was on his way she said so i got down next to joy's ear and she said to me she said i asked joy joy are you able to wait until after Christmas? Are you able to wait until after Christmas? She said, Joey told her with a real faint voice, yes, yes, mom, I'm able to wait. And she went on and she said, December the 26th, she said, I went into his bedroom and Joey had passed. And she went on talking and I said, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. She said, what is it? I'm like, wait a minute. I said, think about the words that you asked him. You asked Joey. Joy, are you able to wait? In other words, do you have the capabilities to prolong your dying organism past Christmas? And he told you, his answer was yes. I said, do you understand how important and how powerful that is. She said, David, what do you mean? I'm like, listen. He was in a state of dying. He was in a state of suffering. You said that you knew and you felt that Joey was going to die that night on the 23rd. But you went in there and you asked him, are you able to wait until after Christmas and he told you yes so what is it that Joey knew about that organism at that at that moment what power and ability did the creator give him to prolong his dying organism past Christmas and on to the 26th you made an agreement with him past Christmas and you said Joey passed away on the 26th, the day after Christmas. I said, think about this. When Yeshua was on the cross, okay? 
He was suffering with his organism. He was suffering with it. He held on until it was time to give up the ghost. I said, listen to me carefully. When I give you something, I'm empowered to give you something. I can pick up my cell phone and I have the power and the ability to give you something. All I have to do is pass it over to you. That's power and ability. And we're, we're dealing with time. The time from when I decided to pass my cell phone over to you. So you're dealing with time, power. I mention that because Yeshua gave up the ghost after he said, it is finished. It is time to exit the organism and go unto God. I told her, Joey didn't die. He didn't die. He did the same thing that Yeshua did. He gave up the ghost. Joey didn't die. Joey left. He left. Joey said, the agreement that I made with my mother, it is finished. Joey left. He gave up the ghost. He was, he was in power to give way from the organism. Some people die. Some people leave. Brother Joey left. That's why he was able to wait. So basically what is being said, during that time, some of us will know exactly what time and how close this organism is moving towards the ultimate death. See, it's, it's easy for us to stand over them and be really, you know, unconsciously selfish. Please don't go, mom. Please don't go. And your mother is suffering. And even in that sense, and this may offend some of you, sometimes we forget how much we love our parents and our, and our loved ones because we are suffering with this selfish sense of attachment to them. Please don't go. And yet still we're looking down at them and they're suffering. They're suffering. And they're trying to hold on for us. They're trying to hold on for us. So, some of us at that state have an infinite knowledge of this organism, even though they're close to the end. They have a clear perception of this organism now. And so when someone comes and asks them, are you able to wait from the 23rd and after Christmas, they have an infinite knowledge and understanding and endurance to do so. They're able to fulfill that. And so Joey's mother, when Joey had agreed with his mother, yes, mom, I'm able to wait. That helped her know exactly when her son's organism was going to expire. So that helped her deal with the reality of the death of his organism. And so as we went forward talking and I explained that to her, I said, you, you know, she said, you know, David, now that you say that, when he did pass on, there was sadness, but there was a peace present. There was a peace present. She said, because like you mentioned, we made an agreement 
and he knew that he was able to win. And you're right, Joey left, Joey didn't die. There is no death. There's just an expiration day for this organism. So I say again, attachments can sometimes bring about pain. And the dual component of attachments is having the ability to let go. Having the ability to let go is recognizing that to hold on to something that the creator has evidently said, this point in this person's living condition is over. And that goes for different experiences as well. It's time when, you know, when people say it's time to move on because there's nothing else left to either be said or done. As every subject, there are some people who understand what's being said. And there are some people who don't understand what's being said, either because it's something that they've never heard before, which doesn't line up with their um, understanding of things, which the majority of the time, their particular understanding of things is not their own, but a traditional level of understanding that's been passed down from generation to generation. Now, I'm talking, to, talking about particularly the religious community, the religious community. I bring this up because this has everything to do with the video that I put before this one, of where it talks about my friend Joey's transition there are some um pastors that um invited me to their grouping that i went to yesterday and they brought that up and it was um i would say about six six of them and only four of them understood exactly what i, I was saying but the other two was of course trying to um somewhat cause conflict and disorder in the meeting as before when I was going around speaking in the 90s. And one of them had got offended when I had compared Joey's leaving to Yeshua saying it is finished and he gave up the ghost, you know, and Many of them understood that, many of them agreed. But there's always these ones in there who feels as though when you make those type of comparisons, they consider it um, an abomination because you're comparing a so-called common human being to that of uh, Yeshua, who was, quote unquote, the son of God, that man should never compare him to other common men when Yeshua was sent to help us understand what being a common human being is. So what's going on in the religious community? And this, is and this has been going on for years, and I had explained this to them. The problem with the church when it comes to Yeshua is that they exalt Yeshua so far above humans 
as though he becomes inhuman, but all at the same time, you are to be Christ-like, which implies a reflection of him. And how is it that you can become a reflection of a human being that is taught to be exalted above common human beings? And I say common human beings because we have been labeled as common human beings. When Yeshua came and he had explained to us, and I always quote this, that he said in the Beatitudes, be ye therefore perfect as your father in heaven is also perfect. If you are born to be an extension of God in his image and after his likeness, you are like him or it, then this is one of the reasons why Yeshua died to his flesh self, as they said, he was the seed of David according to the flesh. But he declared himself the son of God according to the spirit of holiness. It's, it's that simple. But you have a whole lot of people in the religious community who have this romance with debating, this, this romance with wanting to be the greatest pastor or the greatest evangelist ever upon the earth, which in itself and that thought in itself is saying that you have the desire to not only compete, but to exalt yourself above your other brothers who are destined to do the same work. You wanna be better than them. You wanna be greater than them. And this is one of the reasons why they say, is Christ house divided? Yes, it is. When you want to be better or indifferent than your other so-called brother, and sister instead of as I said I believe Paul has said all are one in Christ Jesus because we're all out here trying to do the work well I can't say all but do the work and try ourselves to make the world a better place which implies being the example in society to where people will look at you and start asking you, what are you into? What church do you go to? Or even as a common human being, you know, label common human being as myself, who go around, give counsel, help people whenever I can to the best of my ability and just be a human being. I've, I've, had, um, I've, I've had people ask me, what church do you go to? And I told them, I don't attend church. I'm just a human being, and I'm just trying to be the best human being that I can. It's because I understand the message. And simply because you understand the man's message doesn't imply that you have to jump on board or anyone's bandwagon and say, okay, due to the fact that I understood the message that Yeshua told us, simply because I understood the um, message of Muhammad as far as the um, religion of Islam is concerned, simply because I understood the message um, that the Buddha had for us, it does not imply that I'm a Christian, it does not imply that I'm a Muslim, and it doesn't imply that I'm a Buddhist. It implies a man who is trying his hardest to be the best human being that he know that he can with the knowledge of him having of himself. Pardon me, I had to uh, answer a phone call. But having the knowledge of yourself, accumulate knowledge and information of oneself, it's a daily journey. 
you know, as Yeshua told his disciples. Moving forward and observing all things. And in the observing all things is in harmony with observing oneself. And you will never master oneself because you're a living human being and each day you're learning something more of yourself, whether it's considered or understood as bad or good, which goes in harmony with growth. You learn something bad of yourself. You have the opportunity simply because you're still living to resolve it. And either some people improve at their wicked flaws. Some people die to those wicked flaws and become a better functioning human being for humanity to try to spread good humanitarian personalities and, and attitudes in order to uplift other people in this society at, you know, by, by way of example and with those acts towards one another, the society becomes better because the human beings are becoming better. So that's that's the message right there. But as, as far as getting offended, which I really don't care, but as far as getting offended, what I said of Joey's transition is in fact true. I'm going to give you another example. My son's mother had a cousin. Her name was Monique. Monique had cancer. Now, the night that she passed, um, she came home because um, I wasn't with the I, I wasn't at the hospital with her. And she had gave me the information that Monique had passed away. And she was upset about it. And she said that her her aunt Jennifer had went over to Monique while she was suffering. And she asked Monique, Monique, are you going to be coming home? Monique, she said, no. I won't be coming back home. So Monique knew that she was not going to make it from her condition. Now, most people may say, well, of course she, she knew she wasn't going to make it. She knew that she was dying because of her condition, right? She knew, but those who observed her didn't know. This is the reason why her aunt had asked her, are you coming home? And Monique, knowing the condition of her organism and having that insight that she was not going to be coming home, she knew that she was getting ready to transcend from her flesh and into the spiritual realm. It's just that simple. So when she passed, she gave up the ghost. I mean, how, how hard is that to understand? But you have people in a religious world, as I said before, who have a romance of debating information. And I've said before, this is the danger of accumulating information, especially within the, the religious constitutions of the world. I've seen people sit at tables and go back and forth arguing about things that make absolutely no sense and are totally irrelevant to the reality that we're living today. You're sitting at the table arguing about the Jewish calendar. Who's the real Jews? Who's the fake Jews? And the only thing that's cultivating within that opposing exchange is hatred and then hatred swells at the table simply because you don't agree with what I say we can't be friends no more we can't be brothers no more so you get up from the table 
and you leave. When the whole collaboration at the table is supposed to is is supposed to not only cultivate love but to maintain it. Joy left the same as Yeshua left. And what we have to do is start understanding what is it about those who are getting ready to pass on? If you listen to their language and if you listen to the words that they're saying, they have a profound understanding and a profound peace within them to where people who walk around every day would be afraid. But those who are getting ready to transition, transcend into the spiritual realm, if you look at them, they're not afraid, they're at peace. So what is it about that state during that particular time? What is it that they know that brings about this peace where people who are walking around here every day, when they talk about people in that state, it makes them afraid. They're at peace during that time. And for some reason, not enough people are interested in conversing with them at the time. They, they may have something profound for you to know. It's just what I've noticed. I had a motorcycle accident. I'm going to talk about this shortly, not in depth because that's, that's, that's a whole different video. I had a motorcycle accident in 2014, February the 10th. Now during this motorcycle accident, I was, I was suffering from exhaustion. And while I was riding my motorcycle, I was going to pick up my last check at this one job so I could start another management job at another institution. And simply because um, I was in a bad relationship, you know, there was a whole lot of things going on, so I wasn't getting a whole lot of rest. So during this trip to go pick up my um, last paycheck, my body shut off. You know, when you're tired, the reason why you say I'm tired is because the organism is sending you, transmitting a message to you saying, I'm tired, you need to get some rest. And so the reason why you saying I'm tired is because that's the organism telling you that it's tired and you need to lay out. The danger of being exhausted is that when you're suffering from exhaustion, you've gone past the organism warning you that it's tired. You're not tired now, you're exhausted. Now, what exhaustion doesn't do is warn you. It doesn't warn you that it's getting ready to shut off and the organism does not care what you're doing or where you are at. And as you saw a whole lot of celebrities like um, Wendy Williams, when she passed out, Michael Jackson, when he passed out, a lot of celebrities will be up there doing their things and all of a sudden they just, the organism just shuts off. That's what happened to me in my state of exhaustion when I was riding my motorcycle. My organism, it just shut off. And I went past a red light and I hit a RV at 57 miles an hour. And I sustained a head injury. The reason why this hand is, is twisted is because when I ran into the RV and I hit my head, 
my hand hit the handlebars and it twisted all the way around. I hit my chest cavity. It didn't, it didn't shatter. I broke my upper right rib, you know, and I broke my left shoulder. And I had passed from the organism for about six minutes. I had died, I didn't show any life signs. Now, the state that I was in, I can only explain it like this. I was again in that state of the living universe before it was time for the creator to speak me into the womb of my mother and his word became flesh, myself. But the state that I was in, there was no memory. There was no knowledge that I had kids. There was no knowledge that my name was David. Okay? Knowledge in terms of that is accumulated in the organism. And once the organism stops and the spirit leaves the organism, all of the memory and the information remain with the organism. It dies with the organism. The fear, the stress, all of those things. The love that you have for your loved ones, all of that stuff. But when you're in the spiritual realm, there are no kids. There is no knowledge. There is no stress. There is no love, no anger, nothing. Nothing is present which implies everything is present in terms of awareness, the knowing, being back a part of everything that bears life and power. So you're not dealing with a man who is coming up with things when I say you go back to everything that bears life and power. And you know nothing but you are a part of clarity itself everything you are in the know and you are not in the know based upon information knowledge constitutions religious doctrine all of those things no you are in the know period you are back to being a part of everything that bears life and power you're back to that Unfortunately, and I will say unfortunately, it was just not my time to pass completely over. And when the creator started bringing me back, I didn't want to come back here because just that little movement of bringing me back, I knew what I was coming to. I knew what I was coming back to and I didn't want to be here dealing with all of this madness. I did not want because where I was, what we understand or think that we understand in terms of peace and freedom, what I felt was beyond it. You couldn't put a title on it. All that I can, the, the best way that I can explain is that I was very much alive. And I say again, because it had a very, that state had a very familiar feeling to it. So that's one of the reasons why I say I was, I felt very alive again and free because I was no longer encased in this organism. So I had explained that to the pastors and we went into some some areas of study that is in 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 terms of um conversations i would say it's explaining that experience to them they had explained some experiences to me that they've had even if they were not in accidents they share some things with these four pastors but these two pastors were dead set against not only what I had explained, but what everyone explained, but it doesn't matter. 
the transition period is very real. Those who are getting ready to pass from the organism and into the spiritual realm, they are imbued with a clarity that they never had during their life experience when their organism was quote unquote healthy. And obviously it's information that is sacred and only destined for the knowing during that particular time. However, that information is available. If we would just listen, I was given a glimpse of it when I had passed on during my motorcycle accident. And it was one evening that um, me, Brother Angel, Brother um, Dwayne, all of us was in the backyard. You know, his um, wife and his cousins and everybody was back there. And we were talking about the gospel and, and everything. And when I came up and I told them I was trying to explain what I felt when I was out of the flesh, when I was outside the organism, I tried to explain it to them and I wasn't able to explain it because obviously at that point in time, I was not supposed to. So with that being said, when you experience something like that, and when the creator allow you to experience something like that, the creator is going to give you a glimpse, a very limited understanding. And it's only because this organism can only accumulate so much information and therefore there's some information that is of the spiritual realm that the organism is not supposed to contain because obviously the condition of the heart of that human being would take that information and use it against humanity instead of for humanity. So there's some information that people, as Joey, when he told his mother, yes, mom, I am able to wait. And as I said to her, that's profound. That's very powerful. What did he know? Of not only of the organism, but in terms of his destiny, of an ability of leaving his organism and therefore the planet on December the 26th when you asked him to wait December the 23rd. See, this, this whole life experience is very profound and what religious doctrine does to this experience is limit the experience and it puts it inside of a box called religion and it puts a very limited and contaminated constitution in it which is religious doctrine and you can't you are considered the devil or um an abomination if you venture or have an understanding that is outside the sphere of the common religion, religions of the world. And this is one of the primary reasons why the world and the shape is, is that, that is in. And this is one of the reasons why your Bible and your Quran says in the last days, the spirit of truth is going to come and guide you to all truth. It didn't say your religion, Christianity, is going to guide you to all truth, which implies you don't have it. And that goes for 
Islam and any other crooked religion that is on this planet that you've given your lives to in order to continue to be misled because even right there in your mind here it is a man Yeshua was given a message and instead of the disciples writing down exactly what he said no they wanted to involve themselves this is the reason why you have the gospel according to Matthew the gospel according to John uh, the, the um, Luke and, and all those other ones instead of writing down exactly what Yeshua said no I'm not going to give you what exactly what he said I'm going to give you my take on it this is my take according to what he says said so his own disciples and his own followers pulled you further and further from the facts you could have had the facts of what he said but the reason why you are left to believe is because of the disciples not writing down exactly what he said and then it gets worse then the religious community comes in and they they took down they they found all the scriptures that all of the disciples and you know them wrote down and then they put it in the religious institutions and they wrote down their take according to Matthew's point of view so you consistently being pulled further and further away from the facts and this is the reason why all of your institutions are filled with people who are just simply left to believe and that's the reason why it is so much conflict with all of you and this is the reason why with all that you know you know absolutely nothing because you don't have the facts if you are not given the facts and if you are left to believe what's being said then you have nothing perfect example they say they ask me David do you believe that Yeshua rose from the dead I told them oh I wasn't there now if I was there and I saw this then I wouldn't have to believe it it would be a fact to me it will be fact because I saw this I would be there to see this and I wouldn't have to believe it now if I'm the only person there who saw this then after the fact I tell you about it you're left to believe because you was not there to see this as a fact this is the reason why the spirit of truth slash the facts is going to come and guide mankind to all truths all truths and mind you the religion the definition of religion is man's search for God which implies man does not have the truth he's still in search of man's search for God now people may say well he's searching you know through the scriptures and blah 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 you can play with that all you want to but man does not have the facts we're all down here or here left to believe one another it's information the exchange of information even in your little bible studies all the way back to sunday school you're teaching the little kids the scripture and you're sitting at a table or you got your little kids sitting in a little circle so what does the scripture mean to you everybody give their little point of views of what it means to them which implies nobody knows the facts we're, we're we're just giving point of views of this particular scripture that has been contaminated by the disciples and the religious scholars of the church institution you don't have the facts unless you suffer through the 
this organism until you move ahead, move forward, and experience things in the present. And that's the creator to give you insight on what Yeshua meant based upon what little information that we have from the disciples and from the church institution give us insight this is this is the reason why we meditate for understanding and clarity because everything has been so contaminated okay mankind doesn't have the facts he does not have the truth now if they would have just wrote down exactly what that man said then we wouldn't be in this mess that we're in right now. So the transition period, going back to that, the transition period is very real. And there is no quote unquote, um, round the way pastors like those two who were at the meeting. If you haven't suffered anything like that, or if you were not at the bedside of someone who was getting ready to trans Trans, transcend from this organism and into the spiritual world, it's best that you be quiet and just listen to those who contain that level of information. Because we were given that information for a reason. And so we're distributing this type of information and here we are bumping heads with you common religious folk who know absolutely nothing. You're nothing but entertainers. That's all you are. You're entertainers. And that's the reason why the world's in the shape that it's in this day. So with that being said, I'm gonna end this video right now because um, I think I've um, said enough. And um, everyone have a good evening. But keep an open mind and open heart, okay? This life journey is um, much more profound than what your Bible says. It's much more profound than what your Quran says. Don't put your heart and your mind inside of a box called Christianity, called Islam, called Buddhism. The greatest book that you will ever read is life itself and therefore you. The most interesting book that you will ever read will forever be yourself and one another. With that being said, everyone have a pleasant evening and stay human.
One day two beings were walking down a path 5,220 years ago talking to one another. As they were doing so, they suddenly saw another presence walking towards them. As they passed by this presence, they both spoke a kind of love. As they continued to venture their opposite ventures, the one who was seen coming towards had suddenly dropped something upon the opposite path. One of the beings looked back and saw that the presence had dropped something. Instead of calling upon the presence to alarm it that it had dropped something, the being remained silent and allowed the presence to proceed. Afterwards, both of the beings went to pick up what was dropped. One of the beings had asked the other, what is that? The other one had answered, it had dropped some tree. His partner being became excited saying, this is a marvelous time isn't it? This is a good thing we have come upon, correct? The being who had picked up the truth had replied, Yes, this is a good thing. A good thing for our own agenda. The presence whom has ventured past and beyond us has left us a profound living and present inheritance. The being who asked the other and what it was had asked, Well, let us go and tell the entire earth about the unfortunate moment. The being who found the truth told the other, No, we first have to do something with it. The other had asked, What is that? The being who is now addressed as Amy had replied, we first have to organize it. See, this, this whole life experience is very profound. And what religious doctrine does to this experience is limit the experience and it puts it inside of a box called religion and it puts a very limited and contaminated constitution in it which is religious doctrine and you can't, you are considered the devil or um, an abomination if you venture or have an understanding that is outside the sphere of the common religion, religions of the world. And this is one of the primary reasons why the world's in the shape is that, that is in. And this is one of the reasons why your Bible and your Quran says in the last day, the spirit of truth it's going to come and guide you to all truth. It didn't say your religion, Christianity is going to guide you to all truth, which implies you don't have it. And that goes for Islam and any other crooked religion that is on this planet that you've given your lives to in order to continue to be misled. Because even right there in your mind, here it is, a man, Yeshua, was given a message. And instead of the disciples writing down exactly what he said, no, they wanted to involve themselves. This is the reason why you have the gospel according to Matthew, the gospel according to John, uh, the, the um, Luke, and, and all those other ones. Instead of writing down exactly what Yeshua said, no. I'm not going to give you what exactly what he said. I'm going to give you my take on it. This is my take according to what he said. said. So his own disciples and his own followers put you further and further from the facts. You could have had the facts of what he said. But the reason why you are left to believe is because of the disciples not writing down exactly what he said. And then it gets worse. Then the religious community comes in and they, they took down, they, they found all the scriptures that all of the disciples and you know them wrote down. And then they put it in the religious institutions. And they wrote down their take according to Matthew's point of view so you consistently being pulled further and further away from the facts 
and this is the reason why all of your institutions are filled with people who are just simply left to believe and that's the reason why it is so much conflict with all of you and this is the reason why with all that you know you know absolutely nothing because you don't have the facts if you are not given the facts and if you are left to believe what's being said then you have nothing perfect example they say they ask me david do you believe that yeshua rose from the dead i told them no oh, i wasn't there now if i was there and i saw this then i wouldn't have to believe it would be a fact to me it will be fact because I saw this. I would be there to see this and I wouldn't have to believe it. Now, if I'm the only person there who saw this, then after the fact, I tell you about it, you're left to believe because you was not there to see this as a fact. This is the reason why the spirit of truth slash the facts is going to come and guide mankind to all truth. All truth. And mind you, the religion, the definition of religion is man's search for God, which implies man does not have the truth. He's still in search of man's search for God. Now people may say, well, he's searching, you know, through the scriptures and blah, 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 blah. You can play with that all you want, but man does not have the facts. We're all down here or here left to believe one another. It's information, the exchange of information even in your little Bible studies, all the way back to Sunday school, you're teaching the little kids the scriptures, and you're sitting at a table, or you got your little kids sitting in a little circle. So what does the scripture mean to you? Everybody give their little point of views of what it means to them, which implies nobody knows the facts. We're, we're, we're just giving them point of views of this particular scripture that has been contaminated by the disciples and the religious scholars of the church institution. You don't have the facts. Y'all ask, how can you claim that our religious doctrines are crooked? Easy behavior, your behavior. See, the whole thing with religious doctrines claim is that it's supposed to make you a better human being by way of the presence of God. However, the very definition of religion is man's search for God, which implies you haven't found it. And I've always seen it through your behavior. Now, why do you say, well, who the hell does he think he is to, to single out himself as though he's the primary observant of all of these different religions? I'm talking about my 60 years on this planet. I have never met anyone a part of any organized religion that has lived up to being a reflection of what they say that they believe. See, the whole thing is, if you had the facts, then the truth would affect you in such a way it would it would demonstrate through your behavior towards humanity. But every person, and I mean every person, whether it's a church, a mosque, or a ministry, have never shown me personally that religious doctrine is a tool for 
helping people to become more and more. Because if you look at Yeshua's walk, Brother Malcolm X's walk, Brother Dr. King's walk, all of these people who religion has put forth towards the world, it has forever been the religion of the world that has helped eliminate these great men. And all I see is that today, I bring up again, a brother of mine and a young man was sitting at a table going over some stuff that was just totally pointless about the Jewish calendar. And even if it wasn't about the Jewish calendar, why are these two men sitting at a table going back and forth at each other, arguing about something that's supposed to be divine? Different point of views and, and all of that. Here it is, the Islamic world is the same way. And even your prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he has said three generations after me will no longer be of me. That came out of your prophet's mouth himself. So what was he saying? 60 years after my physical death, Islam will no longer be of my mind nor my spirit. So what is this you practicing today if Islam has died 60 years after your prophet's death? What do you call this now? What are you serving? You're serving a, a religion that is in fact dead. The same thing as Christianity. And what demonstrates that is your behavior towards humanity as a whole, towards each other within your own ranks. It has always been such. So that's one of the reasons why I can say that. Because I haven't been a man that's been walking upon this earth with his eyes closed. I've seen a whole lot and I've paid attention to a whole lot. And some of the most abusive people that I've ever met in my 60 years were these people who were walking around with Bibles and Korans in their hands. And this is why the scripture said, the spirit of truth, therefore the spirit of God, Allah, Yahweh or whatever you wanna call it, it will come and guide you into all truth because obviously you don't have it. You have to be guided to it by way of the spirit of the creator itself. Not some man inspired or claim to be inspired by the Holy Spirit. No, the spirit itself is gonna come and guide you to all truth. So we don't know if that's gonna be um, somebody or something manifested or if a state of enlightenment is going to suddenly come through either one man, two men, or a group of men that's going to guide everyone to all truth. Now, whenever someone was sent, that person had to suffer. However, this one, according to the scriptures, he will guide you or it will guide you to all truth. Which implies it's going to be successful. So in spite of the opposition that is set before it or that's going to come after it. He, she or it will be successful. And those who get in the way are going to fail. That's basically what it's saying. So as Brother Malcolm said, the spirit of truth, whether it's inside of a human being or whatever, it's going to be successful by any means necessary. So you can get upset at me, you can get upset at other brothers like me, but it's your behavior that reveals that religious doctrine has no substance because it has been contaminated from day one. As I said before, how come the disciples didn't just write down exactly what the man said? 
Well, this is the way that I understood it. Matthew, John, Luke, and Mark. Well, this, this is the way that I understand it. No one cares about how you understood it. And then their scriptures, um, books were found by the church institutions. And then those were reorganized. Now this is the King James Version, the Gideon's book, all of these people. So you mean to tell me that your religious doctrine, whether it's the Bible or the Quran, is factual? After all of these different um, translations, do we really have to do the research in that particular area to reveal to the world that you don't have the facts? We don't have to look in that area. All we have to do is look at your behavior towards each other and humanity. We don't have to look far. We never have had to look far. So when that time comes, is when the spirit of truth is gonna guide you to the facts, to all truth. And basically it's saying that all truth, that means all of the lies that have been said about this life journey is gonna be exposed and everything is gonna be resolved. And it's not going to be resolved by Christianity. It's not going to be resolved by your Islam. It's not going to be resolved by any religious doctrine that is that that is in activity this day. It's not going to happen like that. Because you people don't have the facts. And your treatment towards humanity reveals that. It reveals that. So why get upset at that fact? So let's again look at you Muslims, since you Muslims were the primary ones who thought that you were attacking me. But you explain this to me. And I've said this before in another video, I've even said this inside a Muslim mosque, okay? When you go to Mecca, you have to do this once a year or once in a lifetime. It really doesn't matter. The whole practice is, when you go to Mecca, you're supposed to leave all of your differences behind you. You, you know, you, you're supposed to leave them behind you. I don't believe in leaving anything behind. I believe in being rid of it. I think that as a Muslim, once you make up your mind that you're getting ready to go to Mecca, Okay, to the birthplace of Muhammad and Abraham. Your um, distinctions of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his message, those distinctions should not be left behind. They should be rid of. And I say that because the whole purpose of going to Mecca it's not to be a hypocrite. If you put these distinctions behind, these Hanbali, Hanafi, and all the rest of that garbage, and you leave that behind you, it means you have intentions on going back to back to those and remain as Muhammad, as Muhammad had had said, not of the mind and heart of Islam, because Muhammad wanted to leave behind a world of Muslims under the one God, which is called Allah. Not different sections, 
of Islam because the message of Islam is not a fragmented message. It's not fragmented. But the way that it became fragmented is because once people started coming up with their own versions of it, the Hanafi, the Hanbali, and, 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 and all of these different areas, those who were able to relate to this particular scholar, everyone grouped, no, well, not, not everyone, a portion of you grouped with these different sects and that went totally against the message of Muhammad, totally against it. So this is the reason why I say, if you're going to go to Mecca, be rid of those things. Why pretend to be a, a um, Muslim community under the one God, Allah? For a whole week, you're pretending to be one community of Muslims under Allah. What's the purpose of coming together like that? Under Allah for a whole week and you're pretending to be one. And then after it's over, you leave and you go back as a fragmented nation of Muslims which is what Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, never wanted, nor he never intended it to be so. So who are you? Are you really Muslims? Because you are not in the reflection of Prophet Muhammad. You are not. So why say in your Quran that the Christian is a hypocrite why you're one you say the christians are not as as um yeshua when you are not as muhammad and so you wonder why i call the religion of islam a crooked religion along with how the other ones are crooked and you're supposed to be the divine people on the planet. You're supposed to be the Christ-like. You're supposed to be um, as Muhammad was. You know, you're supposed to be those who who um, submit your will to do the will of Allah. Well, Allah gave Muhammad a message for all of you to be one nation of Muslims under the one God but you're not, so what are you? You are exactly what Prophet Muhammad feared and what he prophesied. Three generations after me will no longer be of me. He never said that the nation of Islam, and I'm, I'm not speaking in terms of Muhammad, but the nations of Islam, he never said that you guys were gonna resolve your differences. He never said that. He said, no longer be of me. And look at yourselves today. Look at yourselves today. So you're crooked. That's what you are. Brother David, are you judging us? You can you can use the judge, you can use the general uh, the generalizations, Whatever, you can use whatever you want. But the fact is, you are not what Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, wanted. You are no longer a nation of Muslims. You are broken. You are in pain. You are in pain. The same as the body of Christ, so-called body of Christ. And the reason why I say the so-called body of Christ, I don't want anyone to um, claim as Constantine and them claim that Jesus had, um, Yeshua had left a religion behind called Christianity. Yeshua never 
left the religion behind. He left an example behind. This is the reason why he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can get to the Father but through me, by way, my example. That's the only way that you're going to be able to stand before the Creator and be exactly what the Creator would like you to be. So a lot of pastors want to, um, they want to dress it up that you have to be like Jesus. No, that's not what he's saying. He gave you the B attitudes. He told you to go and sin no more, which implies you save yourself. You stop it yourself. The B attitudes is telling you you already possess what is needed in order for you to be righteous according to your individual state of perfection and righteousness. It's, it's, it's right there. You have to do it yourself. Now, due to the fact that the creator created all of us and therefore the, the creator knows us more than we know ourselves because the creator created us. And each living day, we learn more and more of ourselves on an individual basis and also in manners of which we come in contact with one another. We are both learning one another and ourselves by human relationship. That's what it is. So based upon your belief system, who do you say you are? Who do you say you are? Because that's an area where mankind is failing. You want the spirit of truth to come to guide us, um, to, to guide all of us to that one truth, then we have to learn how to become better human beings towards one another. We can't be sitting at tables going back and forth with one another. I'm right and you wrong. And simply because you don't agree with me, brother, I'm out of here. You can't invite people to come into your ministry while your house is not in order. How is your ministry going to be in order if your house is not in order? And then the aftermath, when everyone goes their separate ways, there's no love. No love. But everyone is still claiming to be divine. Hypocrites. But when a person like me speak about it, oh, you're holding on to the past. Why don't he get over it? Hey, this, this, this is my life. I live for this. I live for the truth. That's why I'm here. And I believe in resolve. I believe in redemption. I believe in that because, hey, and the reason why I say the word belief is because I know that the human family can do that. I know that the human family can, can do that. And therefore I believe that all of you can do it. And therefore I know. So does that sound like a contradiction? Nope, not at all. Because I know that we are all human beings. And I know that we are all capable of doing such if we would just get out of our own ways and just do it and stop being crooked because if anyone has ever come in contact with any of these religious constitutions, yeah, you better believe you crooked. You don't have the facts. Look at what happened to um, Brother Malcolm. Islam worked right along with the government. Yeah, I said you did because you working along with Babylon right now over there in, in um, Saudi Arabia. Why do you think Osama bin Laden was so angry at the moderates? Now you can take that any way you want. 
but I've been to Islamabad. I heard things. And America's gonna tell you anything. And what's a shame about it, America has made you to believe anything America puts out there. Believe it. It's so easy for you to believe lies. So easy. The whole thing is this. Nothing is going to get better until we get better for one another. We need to get rid of all of this contaminated information. And we're going to have to love one another. And see, that's one of the primary things that the human family still have not accomplished. Learn how to love one another. And it says that in the scriptures, I only desire one thing is that you love one another. Because see, love is that power of endurance that all of us should contain when we're going back and forth with one another, disagreeing with information that has been contaminated, organized and contaminated. Everything is sitting up inside of you. When he said, go and sin no more, he didn't say, go find a scripture that's gonna help you in that area. He didn't say, I'll help you in that area. He didn't even say the creator would help you in that area. He said, you go and you sin no more. In other words, stop your, you stop your plight of self-destruction yourself. And that goes for, for myself as well. So you could perceive all oh, this dude think he better than everybody. I don't care what you think. If that's how you want to perceive this, that's your problem. But this is this is not my intent. I'm not giving it to you through that intent. The whole thing is we don't have the facts. And we're not going to get it from one another. But what is a shame is that when some of us open up our hearts and our minds and we are blessed with facts, those are the ones that are always be getting, those, those are the ones that are always attacked. Like Yeshua, like Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But you say you want to be as them. Well, as the scriptures say, you better be ready to be persecuted because you're going to be persecuted. Look at what Dr. King suffered. When he started speaking against war, everybody who he knew in Chicago, in, um, in the body, so-called body of Christ, everybody turned against him. They wouldn't even let him speak in their churches. When he spoke, and, and it wasn't just in Chicago. If you look at his life, once he started speaking against war, the last speech from, from my memory and from my research, the last speech that he gave inside of a church is when he announced that he was not going to study war no more. After that, he was speaking in auditoriums, like in his last speech, because the church community would not let him come into their institution and speak against war. Look what happened to Brother Malcolm. The same people who he built up were the same ones who shot him down. Crooked, crooked doctrines. So when it all boils down to it, the only thing that's gonna fix this and the only thing, the only way that things are gonna get better is that we have to become better human beings. We have to stay human. We have to understand who we are and we have to understand what we are.
otherwise this hell is going to continue with us.